What's up? How's it going, everybody? Welcome back for another English 375 lecture here on a bright and sunny Monday morning. We've got a good one for you today. They're usually they're usually good ones. Um, today we've got we're starting off on a new topic today, so we're going to leave case behind and we're going to move instead into questions. We've already looked at yes no questions, so that's going to be our first order of business is to review yes no questions. What's that all about? How did that work again and why? And then we're going to start looking at WH questions, which is going to be our topic for this week. So probably today's Monday lecture and Wednesday's lecture uh, at least will be on WH questions. Um, we'll see if we need more time with it after that. So we'll see how it goes. At least a couple here on good old WH questions, though. Let's get right to it today. We're not messing around on a Monday morning. Let's see what we can see. So with WH, ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself. With yes, no questions, we looked at things like this, right? So we looked at taking a simple declarative sentence like you ate and transforming it via movement to something like did you eat, did you eat, right? Where you get this did. Or you should eat goes to should you eat. I used the one with do insertion, if you remember that from our previous lectures. That's probably two weeks ago now for those lectures. So we looked at this type of sentence. And we're going to review that really quickly, um, the actual tree structure of that, because it's going to lead us into WH questions and because it never hurts to have some reminders. So let's take a look at this tree. I chose a nice short sentence. So thankfully, the tree itself is rather uncomplicated. I did this quickly, so now I'm looking at it and second guessing myself. But so here we have our CP goes to C bar goes to C, TP goes to T bar goes to T. We've got a past tense because we had the sentence, did you eat? You ate. We've got you, I cheated with the triangles, inspect TP right where you'd expect it, and you've got eat down here as our verb. Now, what do we need to do with this? Well, if we wanted to get the sentence, you ate, this would be really simple. All we would do is drop this past tense down onto eat, and you would have you ate. No big deal, right? Nice and easy. If instead we want to get this question, there should be a question mark here, pretend there is, for did you eat, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. So with the sentence did you eat, what we'll notice is that we have the plus Q feature here in C. For you ate, that shouldn't be there. Pretend that wasn't there. For did you eat, this is here though. And what this means is something needs to go here. Somebody needs to come help me out and support me. Somebody needs to go there. It draws up, not just anybody. It draws up T to C movement. This triggers T to C movement. So what this in, in, pract in um, theoretical terms, what this is doing is saying that this clause is a question, right? This CP, which we can think of as the clausal structure, it actually stands for complementizer, not clause, but you can think of it as the clause, the beginning of a clause. This plus Q feature says this clause is a question. That's what it's doing. And the functional element of it is that it's drawing up T to C drawing up T to C. So in order to get this sentence, did you eat, which is a question, I'll draw in the question mark now. Ooh, I'm underlit in the early morning sun. <clears throat> in order to satisfy that plus Q feature that's in C, what we need to do is move T to C. What did we have in T? We had past tense. So here, look, I even added a question mark for you. So now we've drawn up past tense into the C position. But can past tense just chill by itself there? Mm -mm. It needs something too. And it needs something overt to attach to. It basically needs a word to attach to. Normally this is accomplished by lowering it down onto the verb where it attaches and makes eight. But here instead, oh, we hijacked it up here to C and it's going to need something but we don't really have anything to put there. 
So what do we do? Well, we rely on our emergency do support. So when there's nothing else to be done for it, you add do. It's called do support or do insertion right here. What's that going to become? Well, do plus past tense morphologically gives us did. So we're going to stick a did in there in the C head. And now we have the sentence, did you eat? Plus Q is satisfied because the T got drawn up. The past tense is satisfied because it has something to attach to in did. Everything's good. This is getting case. It's getting a theta roll from here, etc., etc. This looks good. This is how we did yes, no questions. And it was a little bit easier if we already had a modal verb like should in T if the sentence instead was you should eat and we can change that very easily to should you eat that would just have the should that was generated here move up to c instead of the plus past we don't need to do the the do insertion because we already have should there should you eat should you eat so that's the i did the more complicated version here that's fine <clears throat> ah ah i lost my eraser Pardon me one moment while I grab my very complex tissue eraser. I'm going to undo that movement for a second. So I'm going to bring us back to where we started. That was our quick, very short, nice and succinct review of yes, no questions. If that doesn't make sense, go back and feel free to check out the lecture on yes, no questions. Is that one I actually recorded? I think that is actually a video I recorded. Recorded a lot of these, so things start to get a little, you know, blurry. The important thing that I want us to remember about these is that they're triggered by this plus Q feature in C. And what that's doing is T to C movement. T to C movement is controlled by this plus Q feature, which makes this clause a question. Now let's look, let's move on and start to look at WH questions. We'll see how those work. And to do this, we're going to get into this a little bit oddly. We're going to start with a sentence like, you ate apples. You ate apples. You ate apples. So if you're working on this at home, go ahead and draw this sentence out. Right? Diagram this sentence. We're going to be modifying it, so preferably do it in pencil. Or if you have a whiteboard, of course, you can do it that way. Very high tech. You ate apples. I'm going to alter this tree really quick to match that. And we're going to walk through a few steps of essentially sentence transformation. One last finishing touch here. Hope you guys are doing well on a Monday, by the way. Hanging in there during this time of quarantine. Oops, I went the other side. So we wanted the sentence, you ate apples. You, past tense, drops down onto eat, which makes ate apples as our DP complement to this verb here. You ate apples. Easy as pie. Hopefully this is, you guys can do this in your sleep now, I hope. But let's work on some transformations and let's look at that. Let's see how we would get instead a very similar sentence like this. You ate what? Right, you gotta summon your outrage for the sentence. You ate what? Which is exhibited, of course, by this question mark and explanation mark, the, the, the sentiment of outrage. You ate what? Grammatical sentence of English. And we want to ask, so now the nice part is with this sentence, we got a WH word in here. We're starting to see our first WH word. Yeah, we finally got it. You ate what? And we want to ask ourselves, what position, get it a little, what position? What position is what taking? Like what, what, what kind of phrase do we want to say that what is? 
Now, class, hopefully, you feel extremely well equipped to figure out what part of speech, uh, what uh, morphosyntactic category, what type of phrase we want to list this WH what as. How do we go about doing that? Think back. We've done this many times now. We did this with the apostrophe S. We did this with the modal verbs versus auxiliaries, right? The idea here that we want to hold on to, pause if you want to think about it, is like, what's it in complementary distribution with? What's it interchangeable with? What's it intersubstitutable with? And here I set it up nice and easy, right? That's why we're looking at this transformation. You ate apples goes to you ate what, where it's pretty clear that what here is again going to be the complement of eat. You ate what? What is what you ate, right? And we also see the parallels here where we just replaced apples, we substituted. These things are intersubstitutable. Apples with what? Now, we have a little bit more detective work to do. So we know it needs to be the complement. We know we want it to go somewhere like where we put apples, but we have to decide, is this a DP or an NP? Is this what going to be a bare NP or a DP? Well, theoretically, we can always say like, yeah, we don't just do bare NPs. That's not cool. So we're already kind of invested into thinking it's a DP. And in fact, it's a DP. We can change this a little bit and say like, you ate the apples goes to you ate what, where we see that apple, what is also interchangeable with the apples. It's that whole DP phrase. What is a DP here? What is actually a DP here? It's replacing apples. So I'm going to change our tree. This is a very difficult change. Watch closely and follow along as I change the tree from U8 apples to U8 what. Put this in like 0.5 speed if you can. I'm going to erase apples and instead I'm going to write what. That's the only change. Stepwise. We're doing this stepwise. We're going to get more complicated. You, and then this is going to drop down to make eight, what? You ate what? You ate what? We did it, all right? All right we're like two-thirds done with this already. We got you ate apples, you ate what? Let's look at our last transformation. So what this point showed, the reason we did this, we looked at this difference, is so that we could see where what is base generated in the deep structure. So in the deep structure, we can see that what is the DP complement of this verb. It's the DP complement of the verb. That's what we were after. That's why we did that. It was fairly simplistic. Now let's look at an actual WH question. And I forgot a question mark again. Unforgivable. An actual question like this. What did you eat? What did you eat? So note that this is just a transformed version of this previous sentence. So what